Hi everyone, Kyriak Kusiliadis. If you want to make money, you want to get into property, sit and listen to this. If you're not interested, go watch your TV, go to the pub, go and do what you're doing uh, if you're not interested. <clears throat> but uh, to the people that really want to, I'm going to give you some pointers today. I always ask people, do you know what the best motor car to own is? And people start telling me Porsches, Ferraris, BMWs. I say, no, it's a very simple one. A fully paid vehicle. You know, I'd, if you have a vehicle that's fully paid and it doesn't give you problems, why do you want to sell it? It is the most silliest thing. So let me give you an example. What happened to me? I like to use those as examples. And then I'm going to give you some other examples. So I had a vehicle which I sold to a guy six years ago. So I had walked into a, a BMW dealership and um, I said to them, you know, my motor plan's coming um, to an end. What do you think? Oh, no, it's going to cost you a lot of money. You need to get a new one and you've got to trade it in. And, you know, you listen to the garbage that gets told to you and uh, you end up spending money. So I ran into the guy the other day who bought this vehicle from me six years ago. I said to him, are you still driving that vehicle? He says to me, yes, I'm still driving this vehicle. I said to him, please tell me, what does this vehicle cost you in the last six years? He says to me, it's cost me just over 35,000 Rand, obviously excluding my services. So in extra stuff that has come in, it's cost me 35,000 Rand. So what happened to me? I ended up buying a vehicle, the, costing me money for the last five, six years, and listening to what I was told that my motor plan is going to expire, it's going to end up costing me a fortune, and here's a guy who's been driving the vehicle, just cost him just over 30,000 Rand. So, you know, at the end of the day, what is the best vehicle to own? It's a fully paid vehicle, because at the end of the day, if you don't have any more payments, why do you want to have those headaches on your shoulders so i'm going to give you an example you have a property now and we said it before and you're paying anything between five and ten thousand and now you're buying a vehicle over five years between five and ten thousand is your payment you are going to pay that property in half the amount of time let's say you don't have a property now you have a fully paid vehicle Take that payment, put it aside for five years, and you will see, if you've got to pay 10,000 Rand a month for a vehicle, and you've got to pay it for 60 months, you're going to have over 600,000 Rand for a property. 600,000 Rand. So, why do you want to have a vehicle that's going to cost you money the whole time? Because at the end of the day, if your vehicle's paid off, try to maximize it. Get another two years out of it. Get another three. Get another five. So what if it breaks? Costs you 20,000 Rand. It's two months payment or three months payment. So look at that. Unless there's a major problem. But you know what? We all want to believe there's a major problem. Biggest, biggest mistake I see people doing is constantly keeping themselves under financial burdens on HPs. It never brings you any value. You take that vehicle, you take it off the sh uh, showroom floor and you've already lost money. Already lost money. A property, you buy it, it's going to climb. Doesn't matter how bad things are, it's going to climb if you're shopping correctly. So the worst decision you can make in today's economy where there's so much uncertainty because we have a lot of uncertainty. We see things are changing all the time. We don't know where we're going to be in a year or two in the sense of will we have a job? Will our business still be performing? How much will our cost of living be? Those are all uncertainty things. So why get involved in something like an HP that can financially put pressure on you? The worst investment you can make is a vehicle. Worst investment. Because at the end of the day, as soon as you take it off the showroom floor, 
it depreciates in value. Go and lease a vehicle. You're going to be better off. Go and look at it. If times become tough, try and offload that vehicle and see what happens. You're going to take a massive knock. Massive, massive knock. At the end of the day, when you need to go and get debt, a vehicle is a liability. It is not a property like an asset. I've got a guy, same story, five years. He said to me he's driven his vehicle an additional five years. He was paying 10,000 Rand a month. He says to me that every month the 10,000 he was paying on the vehicle, he was borrowing out the money to people that were finding difficulties to meet their house payments or their car payments. And he was borrowing the money out at 14% a month, he was telling me. He tells me, I was talking to him the other day, he has over 550,000 Rand capital and he's earning nearly 14% return on that amount of money. There is no vehicle that can do that for you. So he says to me, he can now afford to go and buy a vehicle. So what I am saying to you is, you want to buy a nice car, nothing wrong with that, but think how you want to do it. Let somebody else's money pay for it. So what do I mean by that? If you can take three years, 36 months of paying a vehicle of 10,000 Rand, you will have 360,000 Rand. Take that 360,000 Rand, invest it, and then you can go buy yourself a vehicle because you've taken that money and you've allowed it to work for you to buy that vehicle. So what people do is they immediately want to buy that vehicle, but invest so that you can actually buy that vehicle and we're actually saying that somebody else is paying the vehicle for you. So you go now and you put yourself under pressure every single month to pay for a vehicle. Why? The best vehicle to own is a fully paid vehicle. So think about it the next time you just decide you want to go and buy a new vehicle because you finished paid your vehicle or you've got another six months or seven months. Or Christmas is coming up and you're getting that bonus. Now you want to buy. A vehicle ain't going to make money for you. Invest it in property. So how do you get into property? If you didn't, if you got to pay 10,000 Rand a month, and for 20 months, you're going to have over 200,000 Rand for a deposit. If it's 5,000 Rand a month, your car payment, you're going to have 100,000 Rand deposit. Let other people depreciate the value on the vehicle for you. So let me give you an example. So a vehicle costs 500,000 Rand. After a year or two, they're selling that vehicle for 300,000 Rand because that is the book value. So you took a two-year-old vehicle and somebody else has already lost 200,000. Why do you want to lose any money? I will never forget the day I bought a vehicle. I was very upset with the salesperson. Very, very. So I wanted to buy this vehicle and... I was, my heart was set on it. So I bought this vehicle. Only to find out that four months later, a new shape came out of the vehicle. I went back to them. I was disappointed. I said to them, but you know, you could have told me that. So I asked them, I would like to trade it and get a new one. They said to me, ah, oh, but it's an old vehicle. I said, but I don't even have a thousand kilometers on this vehicle. Ah, sorry. They tell me that I had to lose over a hundred thousand rand on a vehicle that was around about five months old because the shape had changed. From that day, I made a decision to say, if you have a fully paid vehicle, keep it. Do not sell it because it's the worst decision you can make is to take a vehicle, lose so much money. Do you know how hard it is to make a hundred thousand rand when you actually have to save your money? and your salary. So if you have a fully paid vehicle, get another two years out of it. Get another three years out of it. Get another five years out of it. Take that amount of money you are paying for the vehicle and go and invest it and see what you get. Go and invest it in a business. Even if you go and you just save the money until you have enough money to put on a property, you will be much better off. So the next time you think, let me go and buy another vehicle. Think, what is that vehicle going to do for you besides costing you money? A vehicle has no asset value to you to go and borrow money. 
I remember the time when petrol went haywire in our country. Nobody wanted to touch a six-cylinder vehicle. Nobody. Because petrol was so expensive. Diesel was so expensive. Those prices, I mean, people were just begging, please just take them. I can't drive them. They want to trade them in. And even the dealerships wouldn't even take them in. They needed third parties to buy them because nobody was going to buy these big six-cylinder vehicles and that. So a vehicle is not an investment. All it does is it costs you money. You're looking cool and you want to show off on that, but that does not make money. Take the money, invest it in something, and then go buy yourself a vehicle and say to people, I'm one of the clever people because somebody else is paying my vehicle. Not you paying the vehicle out of your hard-earned uh, salary, out of the hard-earned cash that you're working from your business. Invest, make money out of it, make yourself 50,000 Rand return on investment and say, you know what, now I will blow 10,000 Rand on a vehicle. But don't go and buy. Worst mistake, I always tell people, is when a vehicle is fully paid, do not sell it. Maximize another year, another two, another three, and you'll be surprised. You'll get another five or six years out of that vehicle. What would make you feel better? Driving a nice car that depreciates every single day or to say that I have money in the bank. So come on, man. Think about it. What is better? Who's the more clever person? The man in the, that's got the money in the bank or the man who's invested his money in the property or the guy who's driving the fancy car that's depreciating every single day? There we go. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. Anybody can get into property. Anybody can get into business. Anybody can get into investment. We've said it before. As long as you have the money, you can invest and make additional money. That's why we all create our own destiny. We all know that tough times is coming. We all know that we need to have money aside. We all know that... We can get sick, we can, um, we can lose our jobs, our businesses can go through a financial difficulty. We can get ill. So why, if you have a fully paid vehicle, why would you want to sell it? It does not make sense. Drive that vehicle another two years, another three years, another four years, another five years. And you will thank me at the end of the day because you're going to have another half a million rand sitting. So, at 10,000 rand. A payment and you can get another five years out of your vehicle you're gonna have over a half a million rand capital never mind the amount that you've made with that money and if you're paying five thousand rand you're gonna have over a quarter of a million rand you can buy a property you can invest in a business you can make extra money you can even help people who need to, uh, help that as long as you can trust them and you can charge them a premium because isn't that what people are doing? I see these guys at the pawn shops. You must see the queues. How people are selling their things because they have no money. I saw the other day a guy come there with a brand new 4x4 car. But he's trying to sell his TV because he needs the money. And I'm saying to myself... This man was probably paying 10,000 Rand a month for this SUV and he's inside there selling his TV, selling his jewelry of his wife. Come on. We all can see what will happen before the time. So don't be surprised if you've run into financial difficulties because you've made stupid mistakes. A vehicle is not an investment Use that money invested in something so that somebody else can buy the vehicle for you and say that you are one of the clever people you've invested and you are driving this vehicle for free. And that is what I'm trying to say. The best vehicle to own is a fully paid vehicle. The best vehicle to own is a fully paid vehicle. And I am seeing so many people buying vehicles with massive payments Massive responsibilities, massive commitments, and massive headaches. Now, come on, man. 